You're very welcome back. It's the Daily Rundown. Tuesday evening with me, Fiona Fox. Now, tonight's special guest is Charlie from Gin Fueled Blue Stocking. Did I say that right, Charlie? Yes, you did. So, thanks for coming in tonight, first very of welcome. all. You look amazing. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here. But Gin Fueled, you, are you Gin Fueled? Is, that what this, Pretty much. Is, is this what this implication of this is? Yes. So, it was way back, about four years ago when I was looking for a title for the blog, Gin Fueled was kind of the automatic... Thing. That was definite. That was oh, what was going to be there. Oh, it's for you, right? Yes, okay. yes. Because gin is a big part of your life. Gin is a big part of my life. There's about <laughs> 600 in the world. I've tried at the current selling 253 Shut of them. Up. Yeah, not at the same time. I haven't got past Bombay <laughs> Sapphire. Oh, there's so many out there. Am I really? Am I limited? Yeah, there's oh, wow, loads. Okay. There's loads and loads. I mean, not that Bombay isn't interesting <laughs> and exciting, and certainly from a gin geek perspective, uses a car to head still. It uses it uh, infuses via basket method as opposed to using a maceration method. So it's kind of slightly interesting from a geeky wow. perspective. Um, but there are so many others out there. There's loads More and gins. loads of different flavors and styles and um, ways for you to drink it. So kind of so when you're kind of thinking about, I'm going to be a blog. I'm going to be a blogger. I'm going to be a vlogger. I'm going to you know get out there. So you're you're sort of focal points where gin and the whole kind of plus size world as well, weren't they? To a certain extent. So when, I first, incorporate it, them both. when I first set it up, um, I'd lost 10 stone in weight. 10 stone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, put a couple back on, but I'd lost 10 stone. I went down to a size 12. Um, I discovered I wasn't very comfortable as a size 12. I'm now 16. I'm happy as a 16 and that's where I'm staying. Um, but I'd lost so much weight and I kind of wanted to be able to say to people that it's, it's hard work, but it's doable. It's not unachievable it's not scary and you should actually yes you have to change your life but you should embrace it and actually just do it if you want to do it don't be unhappy don't sit there looking in the mirror feeling sad because you're uncomfortable and unhappy with yourself accept you for who you are and if you really absolutely want to lose the weight you can do it so I originally set it up as that. I, I wrote about the weight loss and um, not long afterwards I, I was invited or I won tickets to 3 Wine Men which is um, a big event. It happens a few times a year where there are around about 450 wines for you to sample. You get to meet some of the, um, the wine experts off the telly. And I went and I came home and I thought, I should write about that as well. Mm. That would go on the blog. It doesn't matter. It's only, you know, it's only for me. I'm not writing it for anybody else. I'll do that. So I wrote it and they picked up on it and they sent me a message and said, would you mind if we promoted this? Um, so they put it on their Facebook, they put it on their Twitter, they put it on their website and linked all the way through to it. And it's just kind of gone from there. So you're, so you're finding you're actually really good writing. <clears throat> I'm enjoying it. If you'd, if you'd said to me about five years ago um, that this is what I'd be doing, I would never have even imagined it. My brother is, is the writer. He's the creative one in the family. He, that's his thing. Um, but actually what's ended up is he's now doing kind of admin stuff and gaming and I'm doing writing, which is a bit weird. Well, the thing is, you had a <coughs> you had, actually had a subject that you could mm. specialise in, right? Mm. So you had, you had folks on this. Um, so they picked up on that and they just... They just promoted it. Free, promoted you they promoted amazing. it. There was a, a couple of gins at the um, wine event anyway, so I kind of picked up on those. I then went to a gin tasting and decided to write about that, and it just kind of escalated from there. I, when I started about four years ago, it pinged into the growth of the craft gin movement. So we had Bombay, which was um, in the 80s. You had... Um, uh, Hendrix. Is it which, easy? You make me feel kind of, no, am, no, I, am I retro or am I, all, I, I, or am I out of date? No, not at all. So Bombay, everybody thinks that Bombay and Hendrix as well are very old gym brands yeah. and they're actually not. The companies behind them are very old. I mean, William Grant is, is um, 19th century, but the brands themselves are actually quite new. So Hendrix is from 1999. So it's actually not super, that old. Yeah, it's not, that's not old. Not at all. Right. Um, Tanqueray is much older than that. Um, even Gordon's is much older than that. So there are older gym brands, but those are newer ones. And actually, it's just pure, beautiful marketing. They have beautiful bottles. They play into a sense of difference. And especially with Hendrix, where it was the whole um, garnish with a slice of cucumber, something completely <laughs> different. I love it. You're, 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 so, you're in love with this completely. Always. I love them all. I, I love gin. It's, it's a fascinating subject, simply for the fact, not just um, chemically and uh, distillation methods, but it's fascinating from a flavour point of view. Once you have juniper, you, you start off with a pure spirit, you then add juniper. After that, you can add anything you like. 
So it's any flavour you like. You can add fruits, you can add peels, you can add herbs and spices. You can add cacao nibs if you feel like it. Some have, uh, there's one with uh, grapefruit and coconut. There's loads of different flavour profiles that you can have. So there is a gin for everybody and that's what's exciting. Isn't it though? It's a funny one, isn't it though? Because I, like, I've heard it described as it's a madman's drink, they call it, don't they? They say gin is the madman's drink. I mean, I know they say it in Ireland. It, well, it's all tied into the whole gin craze of the, the 18th century. Going back. Yeah. But on yeah. the other hand, wouldn't my, one of my best friends mm. swears, she says, you know, if I'm going to a wedding and it's an all day thing, which Irish weddings tend to be. So we start drinking at 12 yeah. you know, p.m. She said, if I drink gin, I'm fine. I just drink yeah. gin all day and I'll be absolutely fine. No hang, no, no getting too drunk. Yeah. No hangover. I tried it and I, maybe because I'm not a gin drinker. I what it was were a you bit drinking much. it with? Did you drink it as gin and tonic? Yeah. Yeah. So what tends to happen is actually, number one, gin is uh, quite a clean spirit. So if you have a sensitivity to sugar, I have quite a sensitive I uh, have a sensitivity, I do. I'm, yeah. I'm not into sugar really, to be honest. Yeah, so, so I struggle. So rum gives me the worst hangovers ever. Right. I will wake up with the shakes and kind of very pale and really, really not well. This is the kind of research you need. <laughs> practice. Yeah, so tell Learning me, what, what gin should I be drinking? Um, definitely drink it with a, a mixer because that actually acts to hydrate you at the same time. So you're not just ingesting well, Sorry, do people drink it straight? Oh yes, you oh can, well, you, I drink it straight. But then I, there are some gins that work better straight for me than other gins. Wow. There's so many different flavor profiles. You could, I could go That's on for hours. It's hardcore, Charlie, though. <laughs> it's hardcore. It's not really. You'd sip it like you would a whiskey. So tell us, so, so what should I have, do you think? A gin um, and... What kind of flavors do you like? Um, I, I would prefer less sugary. Okay. Sweet or but savory, I would also like a kind or... of very strong gin, kind of hidden. Do you know what I mean? So, would you like something very? So, you wouldn't like something very junipery. No, ooh, you'd no. like something quite soft. Yeah, I would think so. So, actually, Hendrix would suit you quite right, well. Okay, because that's got um, juniper is there as a backbone, but it's not a juniper for what we'd class as a ginny gin or a juniper forward gin. So, it's not going to be a gin that's going to hit you with the pine scent as soon as you put it to your nose. Right, I'm going to try it. It will be there, but it won't be predominant. That's probably why you like Bombay. Bombay, when it's distilled, um, it uses a vapor method. So the, the, the alcohol is heated and then it's passed over the botanicals in vapour. So rather than a lot of gins, will, um, it, they'll be macerated in it and you get much more of a heavy, oilier profile. Um, that's a London dry style. If it's then taken through a carter head, it tends to be a lot lighter and a lot fresher and probably a lot more floral. So it would suit you a little bit better. That is amazing. You really, really know your stuff. Oh my God, right. I'm a a you are, you're a gin geek. Yeah, totally. So tell, tell us about the other side of your blog. So the yeah. plus the plus size mm -hmm. aspect of it. What what was so obviously you said you had a, you had a major weight loss mm -hmm. yourself. So ten stone. How did you yes. go about that? Um, I have a personal trainer. I still have him. We've been we've been together nearly five years. <laughs> Wow. It's, like, it's, it's Sorry, Mike. It's lasted doesn't longer it, than any of his girlfriends. I was so, say, you know. it becomes a relationship, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It becomes a really good friendship. And, and it, you, do, you do have to have that, I would imagine, you do. though. With and them. you do have to be able to trust them and they have to be able to trust you. As in, if they give you a plan and you go away with it, you have to actually do it. Um, so that's that's kind of, it's, it's a good give and take and a good trust relationship. So I've been working with Mike for like five years now. I think it's five years next month. This is the fifth year. And what kind of stage yeah. were you at when you, kind of, when you recruited Mike? Um, um, I'd gone down a couple of stone, but I needed to find exercise. And what he actually got me into was running. So I do not look like a runner. I really don't look like a runner. I don't look like a runner when I'm out running. Um, but I run distance. So I don't, I, I, although I'm quite happy to go out and run a three or a 5K, um, I really enjoy 10 half and full marathons, which is a bit weird, but I do. It's not weird. I just think it's such a big thing to take on. <laughs> I was, it's, running. I mean, I'm, I'm not a fan of the treadmill. I'm, you know, oh, I, I, Annie, I hate running for a bus. <clears throat> I, you know, I've been at various fitness levels in my life, but mm -hmm. running, I always think is the yeah. hardest. I think it's the most boring. It can I think be. it's the most difficult to be consistent with. It's, it's hard. Um, and that's why I always set myself challenges. So I find something that I really want to do. Um, so for example, next month I'm running for the Macmillan and it's run out May and it's where you have to run. Oh, this is where it gets interesting. So you have to run The idea is that you run 80 miles throughout May. Um, 80 miles? 80 miles. So I did, cause I run in kilometers um, cause they're shorter. So they <laughs> add up better. Um, they add up faster. So I worked it out in kilometers and it comes out as 128 point something. 
So then I had to round it up to 129, but it was an odd number and my OCD doesn't like that, so I had to make it 130. So next month I'm running 130 kilometers. Sorry, that's a, that's a very, that's a big distance though. It right? is a long distance. That's a big distance. And, and it's, okay, it's over the entire month, so I broke it down and it's about 33K a week. But getting on to that in the first place, I mean, like, being like as you said, being at a stage where you're ten stone heavier. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a very that, is that a very very big project to even approach. It can be, but you yourself. take it in stages. You take it with as with anything. It's it's taking the first step and doing the first bit. So um, when I started, Mike would have me running only for a short period. So it was only kind of minutes on a treadmill, and I absolutely hated it. I really hated, it. and I still don't like running on the treadmill. There's a reason we call we call it the dreadmill. Yeah. Because it's just boring, boring. and monotonous. And so I actually built up the courage and went out early one morning you know when it's quite dark and quiet and um and a, cold and cold though, lots, lots of stuff yeah. against it there as well um and i went out and i ran and it was only about three kilometers and but i came back and i said to the other i really quite enjoyed that that was really quite fun I think I'll do that again. And it just went from there. I, um, I then decided I was going to do a 5K. So I did the Santa run with the, uh, the United Stadium. I then did a 10K. I then did a half marathon. I then did a marathon. I then did another marathon. You've done, you've done marathons, wow. I've done two. I've done two marathons. I've done two half marathons. I've done countless 10... I've done Manchester 10Ks four or five years on the trot. Oh, was that kind of a... Like, did you feel that there was a gap, though, like, you know, in the blogosphere, as they would say? Like, there's not so many, like, plus-size blogs, or there isn't the support there for people who might be, like, over there's the average or whatever. There's quite a lot. You do of, feel there is a lot, right? There's a lot of support for plus-size industry and, and for plus-size bloggers, and it's growing. And that's what's really nice is accepting you for who you are and this is the whole sort of if you like the body confidence movement it's not about whether you are plus size or mm. whether you are not so you can be a size 32 or a size 8 it doesn't matter the whole point is is to not judge people for how they look mm. but for what they do is their actions as opposed to their physicality there's nothing wrong with being whatever size you want to be so as long, long as you're, you're happy. happy yeah and especially if you're fit and healthy i mean yeah. i I train six days a week, sometimes twice a day, but you wouldn't think it to look at me. But everybody I, who knows me knows that I will happily quite, you know, tweet first thing in the morning going, but I'm off to the gym. And I will go and do like this morning, I did two hours in the gym before I then went to, I've had a day of meetings, so I went off and did some meetings, but I did two hours, of, um, one hour nearly of uh, spin, and then I did weights afterwards. <sighs> spin, I've done one spin class in my life. Love spin class. One spin class. <laughs> I wish I had more time to talk to you. But um, <laughs> a good example, I think it was Lisa Riley was an amazing example on yes. Strictly Come Dancing, wasn't she, a few years yeah, ago? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I was like full full splits. She was super, yep. I can't remember where she came. She didn't win, but she, she was right down she to was the very, finalist. She was very, very good. Super fit, super flexible. And, and super curvy. I think the idea, is, and super curvy. And I think this idea of changing this whole idea of what fitness is, mm -hmm. is really, really important. Massively. So, just tell us, what's your blog again if people want to have a look? It's called the Gin Fueled Blue Stocking. Gin Fueled Blue Stocking. Mm -hmm. What's the blue stocking? Uh, blue stocking is an, a, uh, an 18th century term for a lady of learning. Lovely. Uh, Charlie, thanks so much for coming in tonight. Thank so you. If you want to get in touch with that's where they go. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Charlie. Uh, we're going to go for another break. When we come back, Mac and the Medic will be back with us. See you soon.